The attribute noise gets used for so many different situations. It's probably one of my favorite nodes in Houdini, and it should be part of your toolkit for everyday tasks. So how does this actually work? Well, it essentially creates a noise along your mesh that is patterned and it has different values in it. And you can use that noise to define attribute values. You can use that noise to let's say influence breakup and variation for the ingredients you send to a solver. There's all kinds of usages for this. But what I like doing when working with the attribute noise is starting off by working with color. That way I can see what the result's going to be. So I have our little beetle bro right here, hanging out on this beautiful coastline somewhere in Greece or something like that. But anyway, we wanna add a noise. We have this attribute noise. Let's go ahead and turn off the textures right here. And we can see that we have some color noise being applied. From here, I'm going to enable a remap ramp and I'm going to add some contrast. So if I go like that, it's going to clip some values to a lower range and some values to a higher range. I'll then go down here, change the element size until I start seeing a pattern show up. So there we go. Now we actually have a pattern going. And let's say that I want to use this only on his shell. And I want to have some kind of weird morphy like effect happen on his shell to displace it outwards, right? Well, I don't want to use color for that. I want to use a float attribute. In other words, an attribute that just has one component to it. I don't need three, I don't need RGB. So I'll change this here to floats. Let's call this heights right there. And you'll notice that our visualization went away. We can press this little button right here and that will bring back a preview visualization of this attribute. And if you're wondering where this preview visualization lives, it's down here on this little icon. So if I right click, we could see that height was added in as a visualizer. I can turn that off or on. The point is it lives down there. So now that I have this, let's go ahead and maybe adjust a few more things to this. I'll turn down the contrast a little bit like so. And I'll go ahead and also add an animation. So I'll say animate noise. This pulse duration is in seconds. So every one second is going to create a full cycle through the noise. If I want this to go faster, I can make it 0.5. So every half a second now has a full run through the animation like this. Let's now add some detail with this fractal tab. That's what it's here for. If I turn the octaves to zero, this is what the original noise looks like. And this fractal is here to essentially add layers of detail on top of that noise. So if I turn up the octaves, that's like having more iterations of detail. You'll eventually reach a point where you can't tell that any more detail is being added. So one way to figure that out is to start at zero and to keep on adding until you no longer can tell that detail is being added in. Usually that's about at a value of eight. If we turn up the roughness, that adds a bit more contrast to the added detail. And we can also change the lacunarity, which is essentially the scaling of the detail. So a lower lacunarity will give us a more fuzzier, soft look. A higher lacunarity will add a more crunchy feel to it. So let's set the lacunarity here for right now to maybe a value of two. Something right there is fine. And once we like the values that are distributed over the mesh, we can then bring that to a mountain. So we'll do a mountain right here. It <laughs> looks great. We kind of squished our beetle, so <laughs> that's not ideal. But let's go up here to the top. You'll notice that this mountain is also an attribute noise, fun fact, but this time we're going to be working on position. So we're just altering the X, Y, Z values of position. I'm going to check on this blend right here. And that blend will tell us where we need to apply this. So we'll say use attributes and our attribute is going to be height. So as the height value gets bigger, the displacement is going to become more and more intense. 
Let's go ahead and take our element size down to 0.1 again. So something right there. Our height is pretty big. So what we can do to fix that is by going to this amplitude here and setting that to, let's say, 0 0.025. And if we want to only affect, let's say, the shell in certain areas, at the very top, we have this group. So I could just go like that, go up here to the paint select, only affect the things that our eyes can see, and then I can paint along the shell like so. This group will tell the node to only work on certain points. And so if we do something like this for our quick example, then as you can imagine, now we only have displacement in those areas. And now as I press play, we can see the visualization happening everywhere, but that displacement only really happens in areas like this that we just selected in the group field. Now, the one downside to using the group field is that you're going to have these harsh borders. So keep that in mind. It's better to actually use an attribute and then a smooth to kind of blur that out so you don't get those harsh edges right there. But hopefully that gives you an idea of what that group field is there for. Towards the bottom, we do have a couple more parameters with warping and post-process. So if you want a minimum or a maximum value, you can affect that right there. And the warping is here to essentially create a, uh, a folding of the noise pattern. Uh, to really best explain that, imagine that a noise is like a sine wave going up and down like this. And if let's say you're trying to uh, apply this warping, you might take only the lower values and flip it over to the higher values. It basically creates this situation where uh, the noise kind of wraps in on itself in a way. Hard to explain <laughs> with words, but uh, you'll just have to play with that setting to see what it looks like and then go from there. But anyway, that about does it for the attribute noise SOP. Again, this gets used for all kinds of stuff. If let's say you have a noise that you know you want to use to display something, or you want to add variety to the attributes that get sent to a solver. These are all great candidates for the attribute noise. And unlike the attribute randomize, the noise is going to have that noise pattern associated with it. For more videos that are thorough, simplified, and straight to the point, check out cgforge.com, where you'll find resources, one-on-one -on -one consultations, and much more that's all designed to help you achieve your Houdini goals quickly. Thanks for watching, and I hope you have a great day.